rough level. It wants to like optimally thrive, thrive and strive. Yeah. Um, and there are ways that that drive can obviously like I have, there's a whole psychoanalytic reading I have where like that drive can be, per- you could perceive something as beneficial to your flourishing that mm-hmm. isn't beneficial to your flourishing. And Spinoza sees that too. And the way, so you, so you have to work to see more clearly in order to have more flourishing and more joy. And the way that all of us, especially human creatures flourish is when we um, help one another unlock our potential. Mm. And so I always thought that was like a really cool idea just for all pedagogy, for the purpose of education in general, is that like the purpose of education is all of us helping one another see more clearly. Strangely and and funnily, Spinoza's job, so he would never teach in a university because he was scared of persecution. So he worked in a lens grinding factory making seeing eyeglasses. So his job was literally (laughs) helping people see more clearly. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So that's, that's a funny little anecdote about him. So I just, so there's that one level of that's, I thought like pedagogically, that's just such a cool name and idea. Mm -hmm. And then like, I guess not totally capitalistically, but like in a branding kind of way, it's philosophical nobody knows like what the word is so it always starts conversation and also surfing isn't like i'd been i've been engaging with surf instruction since i was a teenager i'm 40 now i was like 16 or 17 when i first like quote unquote like learned to teach surfing and it it really wasn't for me then i i kind of am a born teacher of anything Mm -hmm. um i i love sharing information um, I think that's also like what made me a good waiter when I used to wait tables was <laughs> presenting information and telling people, you know, what things are and uh, what, what they're going to enjoy. Right. That's about flourishing too. Like, no, don't eat that fish yeah. or <laughs> don't, don't want that. <laughs> that's Trust bad for me. you. <laughs> Trust me. You don't want that. No I know fish. It sounds, don't, it sounds don't good it. on the menu. That's from five days ago. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, throw, we'll throw that out there. Uh but but any rate, uh, yeah. yeah. So I've been engaged with like surf, uh, surfing education for a while. But like I, I did it stick at first for me. I was just we all know how it goes. I was like, too in that selfish. I've ditched many people in the white water, especially as a, teen, <laughs> a teenager. Like oh here's a board, here's a wetsuit. See you later. Just uh, catch do something. And yeah. I've seen other people do that. And you know it's just. You get, you know, especially when you're like so focused on your own surfing and getting better in your own surfing, it takes so much time to really care about another surfer's practice as much as you care about your own yeah. um, in a way that as, unless like, you know, the experiences I'm sure we've both had is like, as you read in my paper on yeah. language games, when you grow up in a kinship structure and you're this cute little kid and your dad's a local at the beach or, or you're not, or he's not, or your parents like take you to a beach and some older surfers see you and you're trying and struggling. And then usually you get like a mentor, you know, and it happens yeah. pretty, pretty organically. And I had a whole crew of more and less surly mentors. Yes. Well, you, uh, you grew up in a pretty uh, yeah. tough local surf spot up in um, central Northern California, you know, yeah. and uh, yeah. we don't have to name if you don't yeah. want to, um, but, but it's pretty hardcore. <laughs> it's very it's very hardcore um and and uh anyway so i i was i decided to take the track of higher education because i had uh i had this teacher in high school mr yanowski and we had this great program in my high school uh where they were starting us i mean people talk smack about california public schools but I don't know, maybe they got terrible after I left that system, but they were really good for me. And I have like a little theory that is the area I grew up is so beautiful that it attracted really good teachers. Um, So I grew up in the California public school system and all, and starting in middle school, my school Mm -hmm. system went to the college kind of semester block scheduling. So our school started at 9 a.m. So Mm -hmm. I had like hours to surf All morning school. to surf but mr yanowski surfed and he had to leave at like seven <laughs> like see you later <laughs> mr yanowski and he had to stay like and i just always thought that the that well that like i don't know 
goodness bless school teachers of like small children and teenagers because that is not something that I would want to do. That is just it's a, takes it's a very a difficult certain job. Certain kind of person, certain kind of personality. But I noticed when I was an undergrad at Berkeley. I was like stacking my classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays and noticed my professors were like, had this like great schedule and I liked academia and was good at it. And I was like, this is the path academia because you get to still educate, but like, yeah. you don't have to show up. You don't have that same schedule that the uh, primary school, pri primary and secondary school teachers have. And so my path turned towards academia and then I was like, okay, that might mean that I also have to wait tables for a long time or, uh, you know, and I worked in some surf shops. And then I was noticed in San Francisco that basically uh, there were just all of these kind of adult beginners that like weren't, didn't have access to the mentoring that I had. And, you know, I was angry and annoyed at them. Like a lot of surfers are and like grumbling kook and all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then I, I realized that, you know, it was also in my power and this also wasn't making very much money at the surf shop yeah. uh, that like, I was like, why don't I try teaching surfing again? And except I'm not going to do like, I don't want to do, I don't want to look like basically, I mean, I love you, Ed Guzman, but I didn't want to look like Ed at all. I didn't yeah, want to so be that person who like showed up to the beach with like, you know, 50 soft tops and like rash guards outside the wetsuit and like, well, yeah, there's stand up and yeah, you, you take that. issue in your your uh, grammar of surfing piece, you know, like you, you kind of talk about like, take, for example, the fact that you stopped working at Club Ed because you were frustrated by the tourist style lessons yeah. uh, that was hired a beach. And, you know, the purpose of the job at Club Ed and, and others, most surf schools just to get people to stand up. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, you're you're to a lot of people, that's the definition of surfing. Yeah. And and to to people like you or me, that we know there's so much more than just standing up on a board. Yeah. That's only part of the 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 all the whole experience. But you're getting all these people who are not learning surfing properly. They're just being yeah. paid to you know, it's it's the equivalent of having the Sherpa carry you up to the top of Everest. Did you really do that or did the Sherpa do it? You know, and what's the point, you know, of just yeah. being carried up there? Well, at least they get that view. I at mean, least they get that. Well, at not, least they get not, the view of standing on a wave, I guess. Yeah, they get that view. Yeah, they get that. Well, they, it's a different, I mean, the thing that makes surfing really different is our mountains move, right? And like, yes. that's what's, that's what's so hard about it and makes it so like, I mean, at certain point breaks, you can, I mean, and certain surf instructors that do the push style that are really good at angling their student yeah. into the like fast closing beach break wave can get them on a face perhaps. But even one of the things that's like, I mean, that I'm still working on with some of my advanced and adv adv even advanced clients is getting people to look at, to understand waves. I mean, it is like it's years hard. and years and years. And that's why, again, like back to the thing we were talking about at the beginning, like yeah. we're doing a kind of uh, quantum probability math, a lot of surf, you know, so um Surfers do have, like Aaron James is right in that book, Surfing with Sartre, that surf, surfers ha have, well, actually, he doesn't give surfers enough credit for how smart we are in what we're doing as surfing. We're he reading doesn't geometry, basically. Yeah, know? we're reading, actually, Riemannian 3D space. Yeah, <laughs> like you, you see a wave, you know how it's going to break. Just from before it's even broken, you're able roughly. to predict. <laughs> roughly. roughly, obviously. In probability. You know, if you're standing on the beach, you're you're really gonna know for the most part by the angle, the shoulder, the the height of the peak. You'll have a good probable outcome of that wave. You're basically yeah. predicting, and it's all by just experience, basically. Yeah, by yeah, and it's by experience. I mean, but we have like crazy knowledge stored up in our. Uh, I have like lack of a better word than mind body complex. I hate like dualistic language, but I can't like, I mean, we could just say, I don't know. Like I, I haven't, I haven't been able to get around of dualistic language yet, even though like I don't want to separate brain, body and mind from one another because I feel that surfing is like a supreme activity. And actually it's one of the things that makes it so difficult to do and so difficult to teach. 
And lots of people are like, I just need to get my brain to override this part of my body. And I'm like, well, no, not really. You actually have to get the body to do the thing. They have to work in harmony with one another and getting them whenever a person is actually trying to tell the body to do something in surfing, you've just lost. Yeah. You've you've wasted time. You've wasted time thinking about it. Yeah. You just wasted like now the waves breaking on your back. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. like, and you can't see it. You lose sight of the thing. And, and um, that visualization aspect, like you're saying, when you're checking the surf before you even paddle out, that's why I really emphasize, this is one of the things that like niggled me about the scheduling of, of surf schools and surf school lessons and stuff. It's like, uh, there's no surf, you know, people just show up and put on a wetsuit without like checking the surf. And they, there's not a lot of this focus on like the intention, like we're going to go over there because of this reason. And like, see, that's, so that's a good surfer right there. Let's stay away from that person. There's no Chandler Rick Kane moment when they're sitting on the beach <laughs> and you know, Rick's not allowed to ask a question and he has to be like, what a, we appear to be watching the ocean, you know, but, but yeah. that movie, no matter how cheesy it is, yeah really does break down like you should fucking sit and watch the ocean before you ever surf and watch it a lot and learn you know and really try to study and watch not just the ocean but the surfers in the lineup and what they're doing where they're going how they present themselves how their shoulders are you know so many things to analyze i guess that we oh there's there's so many infinite 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 little tiny details and um yeah, so one of the things that was interesting is that I came here and I I had built a quiver. So I started doing those sessions. I started doing the kind of mentoring, coaching, no yeah. name, no website, just word of mouth. Um, had a few clients out there. I have some, you know, funny stories. You know, there's like a therapeutic aspect to, I mean, one of the things I had to deal with out there that I don't, I, I haven't had to deal with on the East Coast until three years ago in Cape Cod was that Mm. every session began with the shark question. Uh, Cause like I'm teaching in San Francisco and, you know, and so uh, every session, like that was always like a part of the, this is what we do. (laughs) Punch it in the face. Uh, (laughs) Please do not get off of your surfboard and start panicking. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Which actually did happen the one time I've seen a shark with a student. Oh, gosh. (laughs) So uh, I was, like, screaming at her. I was like, get back on your board. Get back on your board. (laughs) On the board. Uh, Get on the board. Let's catch a whitewater. Uh, Anyway, so that ended up fine. But, like, that's, like, not a normal conversation I have out here uh, with inquiries. Yeah. Um, But anyway, so I had a quick – that was going well. And, like, I still was – basically what was happening was like, I wasn't pushing super hard on that. It was actually hard to coach in the San Francisco Bay area because it's so miserable all year. Like the waves on are sh- freaking huge waves are big. Often. The waves are big. And then like, honestly, Pacifica sucks. Like it's okay, but it sucks. Like it's a closeout. It's like not that fun for me to surf except for it's like certain times, a y- like certain times when it's on and like, it's just so cold all year. So you don't have, I know it gets really cold. It sounds funny. I love surfing in the winter here, but like yeah. it's almost because we also get a fall and a summer and a spring and the water temperature changes. And I like surfing in California, but coaching, I have to sit still a lot more for coaching. And so um, it it is hard, especially like in the summers in California, where it's like in Northern California, where it's like onshore all the time, yeah. foggy, gross water still cold like it 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 was a bit of a but it was it was I wasn't sure that was what I wanted to do or the direction I was going like you know in the summers a little bit like here and there with an academic career maybe but I was waiting tables and um in doing fine dining and I was studying philosophy on my own after undergrad and I was just like this is basically has happened to me twice in my life where uh I went away from academia to like just focus on surfing and then I just craved an intellectual community like in surfing the, like, sometimes lacks that yeah, <laughs> the I surf just, community sometimes lacks that <laughs> yeah it's sometimes so I mean this is like a long way to answer your question of yeah. what is com-